Now watch this. Not the whole thing. Let's watch the rest of this. You're going to see it in a minute. See number 80 here? This is Kenny Bell from Nebraska. Kenny Bell is a hell of a football player. Watch this block. Probably a roughness penalty here. But that's some old school football right there. He felt like funking it up. This is Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio Film Room. And today's subject, Nebraska's Kenny Bell. Let's look at it one more time. Nasty. That's just some nasty Saturday night viewing right there. That's how you do it. All right, guys. So that's my attempt as, as far as it's going to go with an intro. This is RSP Film Room number 20. I'm Matt Waldman with Rookie Scouting Portfolio. If you haven't seen these uh, YouTube broadcasts in the past and this is your first time, um, they tend not to be as... Uh, with intro music really it's just usually me and a guest watching film together but tonight set late saturday night early sunday morning it's approximately 4 a.m and i just got finished uh doing some late night film viewing of kenny bell who i watched earlier this afternoon and then wanted to watch a couple more games um this wide receiver from nebraska is 6-1 about 185 he's a senior he's but also a kick returner and frankly i'm just too excited after watching him to be able to go to sleep. Um, so I figured it'd be a good time to do an RSP film room, talk a little bit about him and share with you what I saw with him on film that makes him a good prospect in the NFL. He may not ever be a great prospect in the NFL, but these are the types of guys that I really actually enjoy watching and often find to be much better prospects than some of the guys that we often get excited about in the draft community who are, you know, your 6'4", six, 6'5", six, players, 215 to 230 pounds, who run really fast and who are really strong, but they couldn't catch a cold, much less catch a football. They wouldn't know a route. You know, they wouldn't know a route unless they had a map in front of them, and they might not even be able to complete that. Um, and certainly some of these guys developed. Demarius Thomas didn't know how to run a route. Um, or he knew I run a very limited number of routes at Georgia Tech, if I can be precise with how I, how I describe him. And he really developed into a fine player. He's a terrific route runner now, thanks to a lot of work on his end, as well as working with Peyton Manning and, and Manning's teaching with the Broncos. So there are also players, though, who may not be drafted quite as high as Demarius Thomas, who aren't expected to develop into primary wide receivers, but often can become really strong contributors in the NFL. One of the guys that I really liked in recent drafts was California receiver Marvin Jones, who reminded me a lot of Donald Driver. Both were, you know, guys who were either drafted late or not at all, who took a couple of years to really develop, but but showed their ability to to, you know, to win the ball in the air, to run excellent routes that tell a story against the defensive back and get them moving in the wrong direction and become reliable players because they catch the ball well and they can do something after the catch. And they're versatile either on special teams as return specialists or actually, you know, blocking or tackling in the open field. And Bell, to me, is a complete football player. He's someone that 
Um, you know, the more you watch his tape, what you're going to see is someone who can pretty much do it all on a football field in terms of what is required of him as a wide receiver. Um, the questions that will that people will have will be about his size and his speed and whether he's going to be strong enough to be a primary guy or strong enough to be a starter. He may never be a primary wide receiver, but like Marvin Jones, Donald Driver, um, he's certainly capable of being a strong second wide receiver in an, in an offense and maybe even a, a primary guy depending on how accurate and how um, timing oriented his um, passer would be in this offense. So for those of you um, new to the RSP film room, we're going to just watch some tape of Kenny Bell. I'm going to have the uh, I'm going to have the volume down. We're going to look at him probably in slow motion for about three games. We're going to watch last year's UCLA game, um, a Southern Miss tilt, and then a contest with the University of Miami earlier this year. And uh, we'll just talk about, you know, I'll just talk about what I see. Hopefully this will be worthwhile for you to check out, um, you know, and you'll find something worthwhile in terms of, um, what you learn about Kenny Bell and maybe the wide receiver position, at least from my point of view. Um, and, you know, I encourage you to take a look at the other YouTube videos. You can find them at mountwaldmanrsp.com, or you can also find them um, at the, the RSP film room. You can look that up on YouTube and subscribe there. And I've already have a few hundred, or maybe not that many, a couple hundred subscribers already doing this for the first time this year. This is something I plan to do every every year every week probably for you know as long as i continue studying film which um i don't have any plans to quit anytime soon so let's get this thing rolling we're going to share the tape here one more time this time though we're not going to be looking at uh kenny bell's crushing block even though we've done that for a little bit here we're going to start with uh the southern miss game just a few re few receptions but it's a worthwhile contest to check out. This is 2013. And I'm going to have this tape play a little bit slow, slower so that it doesn't, it's not quite as jumpy. All right, so Bell is the guy that you're going to see in this right-hand side in the right flat, fielding the ball on the fly. And one of the things that I really like about Kenny Bell as a punt, as a kick returner is his patience. And, you know, you often hear people describe good open field runners oftentimes as a kick returner in the open field as a pass receiver. And I think sometimes that's a really good description for good, good open field running, but it isn't always the case. I, what I like about Bell is that I think he differentiates between when he's running in the open field as a receiver and what he does as a kick returner. As a kick returner, to me, he runs more like a running back with patience to press and cut back creases and knowing how to use his blockers. Whereas a wide receiver is often in the open field one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two against guys without blockers. And he is a lot more creative in those situations. And we're going to see some of that here. So you're going to see him field the ball momentarily. If I can get this to, there we go. So you see him field the ball. And you're going to notice right here, and we're going to back it up one more time because I, here we go. You see him kind of veering out to the to the right flat. He's got three teammates who are going to be setting up a wall along this hash. And he's got a fourth player and a fifth who are also going to set up an inside play, you know, uh, an outside seal here. So you're going to have an outside seal and an inside seal, and you're going to have a gap here. But Bell is smart enough and wise enough as a, as a runner to press this outside lane. This is going to bring the defenders inside here. This is going to set up these blocks from the trio of um, blockers here. It's also going to allow these men to stay outside so that this first man that I'm pointing at here at the 20 can also make his block. This has a lot to do with Bell. So you're going to see Bell get there and then break inside. By this point, this defender still hasn't quite, this defender didn't quite buy it, but you see that these def this defender comes inside and he's already got a nice angle so that he can kind of just loop right underneath these blocks, which he does. And he still has a, a lead man coming up the hash and works through. 
I also like the fact that as he sees a defender cut inside, he has the wherewithal to make kind of a leap to avoid getting wrapped completely and stay balanced. Now that momentum carries him into his blocker and he runs into the back of the defend of his blocker, but he's got enough balance to bounce off that slide off, get a few more yards and with a good um, pad level underneath this defender. So he doesn't take a huge hit and still gets to the 31, which is a nice kick return in a situation like this. It's just a good use of his blocking. And this is something that's probably going to get him an opportunity to play in the NFL right away, even if he might not be the biggest or the strongest player, um, you know, that you're going to see. All right, so you got him below here. And this is a beautiful move. We're going to watch him on a slant. He catches the slant in between two defenders, gets the first down here. So let's start it over. One of the things that I like about good receiver play is that it's a, the ability to release off the line of scrimmage against press. This is a simple slant route. He's got a defender playing inside shade. So this defender knows that Bell wants to go inside. So Bell's going to have to do good work with his technique to find a way inside here and do it quickly enough that it doesn't disrupt the timing with the quarterback. Um, with the quarterback's target because if it does quarterbacks going somewhere else what you're going to see is called a three-step release technique just going to see him take approximately three steps you can do it with three or four sometimes you'll see it with two but i think three is really what you want to try and do to achieve some sort of depth against the corner because you want to at least momentarily sell that you're going to go vertically downfield three steps and then you're going to use some sort of combination of a hand move it can be a rip move which is basically an uppercut like motion that you often see with a defensive end or a defensive tackle uppercutting through the the arm of the of the opponent you can see a chop move which is you coming over the top and swatting down on the forearm or elbow or the wrist of the defender's reach you can have a swim move which is you're going to try and avoid that overall and you and kind of just arc your arm over it um, those are three of some of the basic moves that often accompany our uh, three-step release like this so you're going to see one two three and then a release over the top here and he has that he has that swim move inside and kind of a little bit of a bat of the inside arm against this defender and he gets clean inside reduces the shoulder a little bit looks back to the quarterback already and then breaks inside and notice that he doesn't break inside right away that's another thing that i really like about this is that he makes his move keeps his route straight but then now he makes the break inside because he's in tight coverage as it is right now if you make that break earlier you're giving this defender more time to adjust and work underneath but because he's still selling the vertical inside move this defender is just trying to keep up and then the break inside and that break gives him just enough separation so that when the ball arrives he can make a clean catch catches it with his hands now he's wrapped but it's just it's a matter of a foot and then you have the uh you have the defender coming across here to deliver a blow and bell is able to turn the ball away turn his inside shoulder into the hit rebound off the hit and fall forward for a first down maintaining the catch at this point as well so you're gonna you know this is a really you know we'll look at it one more time all the way through Three-step drop, swim move, straightens up that stem, then breaks to the inside, gets that temporary separation, catches with his hands, turns his shoulder into the oncoming blow first down. It's an excellent, underrated route. And that's something that he's going to be able to do in the NFL. You know, he's a little bit banged up here, and you're going to have some people say, oh, well, you know, he's a thin guy. He's not going to be able to handle the beating. He's 6'1", 185, if his weight turns out to be correct when we look at the, the draft workouts. And if that's the case, we have players in the league who are at that weight and who are shorter than him. Antonio Brown, for instance, Deshaun Jackson, Marvin Harrison was good at this. Isaac Bruce was that type of player. You know, we've got guys like Paul Richardson who are playing, who are pretty good. Um, 
Odell Beckham isn't the biggest guy. He's quick. He's wiry. You know, he's also capable of being physical. So here we have Bell as the twin outside right receiver on this play. And we're going to see Martinez roll out to the right. And this is where we're going to see our man Bell come back to the ball. Just make a low catch at the boundary, first down. Again, what I like about this play is what we're going to see in the close-up. We'll see this momentarily. But in the close-up version of this, you're going to see a little bit more physical play from Bell on the defensive back, making sure that he guarantees some separation. You might call it a push-off. I'm going to call it really the defender pushing first and him responding. Okay, this is a nice quick little move first. Now, he doesn't really, he drops his hips. You can see him kind of sitting in the chair here, but he takes multiple steps to do this. He could be more sudden, and he's already quick with this. Look how fast he's already turned around. I mean, he's not fully turned around here yet, but he's, he's pretty quick with his turns already, and he's not even using great technique yet because he should be taking one step, and he takes three little steps sits in the chair a little bit to turn around here. If he can do this in one step, he's going to have even more separation against um, a defensive back in these types of routes. And it's something that he is going to have to learn to do to become a really great NFL route runner. He has that potential, though, because he's already showing that quickness right there. Now, he sees that his quarterback is moving out of the pocket and that he wasn't able to complete the timing route as was as is. So now Bell works downfield, works upfield. The defender puts his hands in, you know, in the way, blocking the path that Bell had. So at this point, this isn't interference or holding. This is just a defender maintaining his position and Bell trying to run through there. And then Bell gives a little bit of a push off. This is something that might be called if really focused on and nitpicked, but oftentimes if you get away with it, it's a good play. And it's not something that, you know, every receiver has done at one time or another. So he works back to the quarterback, nice low catch trapped against his chest, but it's a low ball. You kind of tend to do that and he's shielding the ball and he has good awareness of the sideline, making sure that he stays in bounds. It's a really nice possession play, and you're going to see, you know, this is something that he's going to have to do well at the NFL. You're going to have a trips. Oops. Maybe not. We want to see that just yet. Let's see here. All right. Let's see if I can get uh, back to where we were supposed to go. Here we go. There we go. All right. So we have this trip set. We're going to watch him block. And this is going to be a holding call. I don't agree with this as a hold. I just think that the defender falls down and the, the officials can't believe that the wide receiver made this outside linebacker fall down. He engages here a little bit outside the pads. But look at how close he is. As a run blocker, you want to make sure that you have a close gap so that your arms aren't locked out. See, they're kind of in a V shape here. And so it's at an angle. They're bent at an angle. That gives you the chance to be able to hold on and drive with your legs, which is what you want to do. And he's he didn't fully drive here. The defender's bigger and slips outside. He only gets one arm on the man. But the defender falls because their feet lock up. But because he had contact with the man and the feet locked up, the umpire sees this and calls the calls the holding penalty. May not be the umpire, might be the back judge. But you're going to see the, uh, we're going to flash to this at another angle here. And you see that maybe as a tug of the jersey just a little bit, but you don't see much of a pull. And here he's got one arm in. So this arm's over the top. He's not even tugging it anymore. The outside arm is at the chest plate. I don't see much of a tug. But I do see right about here, the feet collide. The defender falls down, and he's called for a hold. This is probably one of the worst blocks I've seen from Bell. Um, you're going to see a lot better blocks in a different game. 
but you, you what i do like is that they will match him up against linebackers and he gets the job done here's a deep post for a touchdown here and you see you know that he catches his own rebound he, he makes his own rebound tipping the ball first and then making the play and we're going to see a different angle from this route coming up and it's it's a pretty simple route where what you're going to see is that the, the, the off coverage reads the break, anticipates it because he's watching the quarterback and playing over top. And he makes a really nice cut to get in front of the break at the last moment. But the ball arrives a little bit behind Bell. And Bell does a fine job of being able to adjust to it. Watch this. He breaks across. The defender has jumped the route and got in front. You're going to see it from a different angle soon enough that in even clearer relief. But Bell high points the ball, tips it into the air, still able to concentrate and make, you know, stab it with one arm, bring it back into his body while falling backwards. You know, just good hand-eye coordination overall. And it's something that you're going to see with Bell in other games that I'm going to show today. Here's the route. A little bit of a head fake outside, but not a great one. The defender's got a decent angle, and he's kind of looking into the backfield, and you see him breaking already to get in front of Bell. And there's the break right there. This is a really nice play by the defender reading that. Bell didn't do much to disguise his route here, which is something that you don't usually see. Cuts in front. Bell still reaches for the ball. Defender just misses it. Comes down with it. Nice little one-handed snag there to at least initially make the catch. Again, these are the types of plays you want to see because in the NFL, can you make contested catches? Can you adjust your body to the flight of the ball? These are things that he shows that he can do. Patience is a kick return, and we're going to see it again here. And I really like this return. Because what you're going to see again is a press to the inside just enough to where now he's bending outside. He pressed it just a little, just enough. He didn't go all the way to the numbers here or take a two or three yard press. Just enough that it influences the outside defenders to continue their path. And now he's going to break it outside. He's going to press this outside lane a little bit to draw these defenders in and then cut between this outside man and this inside man. And there's the break right back inside, splits these two defenders. And now he turns on the acceleration a little bit, gets past this the angle. And what you see here is he's not inordinately fast, but he certainly does have speed because this is a good angle from number 25. Look at that. And he's able to outrun it with little more than maybe a hand on his butt as he runs by. Gets upfield. Now here we go with this last angle. Good angle again. He's not able to, to accelerate fast enough to beat this angle. And he knows it. So here's what he does. Lowers the shoulder inside, hoping to knock the man down. Doesn't necessarily happen, but you like the aggressiveness. That's physical football. Even if it's not like a huge hit or punishing this is a guy that understands that football is a physical game, and if you attack, good things happen, and he attacks first. He doesn't get dropped. He gets pushed out of bounds, but he does what he needs. He, he does everything he can do to try and get more yards on this play where he's defeated in terms of an angle. Here comes that press and cut back through these guys wasn't between them as I thought, but gets inside out and then upfield and then watch him lean at the end here. Not a great punishing hit or anything, but it's just a fine it's just a small point that I think is important to, to note. So we're gonna look at this UCLA game. This is also a fine contest from from Bell. And we're gonna put this at half speed as well. I think this is the first, this is the worst play for Bell in this game. 
high points the ball, misses it, lets it go through his hands. You're not going to see this very often from him. Reaches high, just doesn't quite get it on this hitch to the outside. Inauspicious start. But, you know, you're going to see players drop the ball. You're going to see them run the wrong route. But what you're looking for is consistency of positives or consistency of negatives. And where are they? And is there a pattern? And the pattern that I see with Bell is what you're about to see here. Being able to make a catch and get your body oriented downfield so that you can make a play. Snatches the ball over his head, over his shoulder, back to the re to the, the passer and get his hands on the ball and tuck it and be downhill and ready to take on this defender. Now, he looks like he's pretty much locked in at the sideline, but watch the series of moves here. A little bit of a stutter step, jab step outside, catches the corner leaning outside, and then comes over top with a little bit of a stiff arm to swat, brings the ball over the defender's head, tucks the ball back into his right arm, while the defender's stumbling to the ground and gets the first down. That's just a gorgeous series of moves for a back. It's, they're kind of dangerous because it's, you know, it kind of looks like a crossover dribble, dribble from a guard the way he comes over top like that. But he's able to get upfield and then finish with, you know, with a nice little shoulder there. So again, we're going to look at it one more time. Flat route, nice catch and snag, plants hard so that he can stay in bounds good boundary awareness and then the series of moves with the swat and then the arm over and then switching the ball the awareness and quickness to do all of that and then finish with a forearm at least to the chest of this defender coming from the inside you're seeing physicality hand-eye coordination you're seeing agility quickness It's all on display on this route, and this is something that I see a lot with his game. It's a savvy football player, and savvy football players make long-term professionals. If he can translate his game to where he's able to do this within a couple of seasons, he's going to start somewhere. He'll be a contributor. He may not ever be a star, but he'll be a good football player. And he'll be a productive football player within within an offense if the offense is functioning well enough for him to have time as a receiver to get open. So let's watch this play here. We've got him as the inside trips man. And notice how he's retreating. Again, he's trying to keep his body oriented downfield. You don't see this very often from college receivers, but he does this consistently. Kind of backs away here. Make sure that he is facing the defense and extends his arms to catch the ball. He always wants to be at an angle where he's running downhill. Really appreciate this a lot from a guy like Bell as a slot player who's running screens like this. Gets outside. Now you're going to watch him give a little bit of a head fake, hopefully to try and freeze the man, and then get pushed out of bounds. But he still gets a decent number of yards there. You're going to see him do that kind of retreat with his pad still facing downfield on a number of screen plays. Here's a stacked set. You're going to see him down below here on the right. And this is just a simple, it's just a simple flat route. And one of the things that you're going to notice is that you have an inside player and then you have an outside player right around here. And I'll back it up so you can see him. Here's a guy on the outside, here's a guy on the inside. Good thing about the stacked play is that Nebraska set this up so that the outside guy, this front man is going to take on this outside guy and stretch the field. So it forces this inside man who is in not in great position to have to play trail and catch up to Bell running this route. So he breaks across, identifies where the ball is, gets his hands up, makes the catch. It's the other thing I like about this play. It's a very simple thing, but notice that Bell doesn't leave his feet. On a, on a ball unnecessarily. He reaches for the ball to, to meet it. There are a lot of receivers that would actually leap on this play, and as they get airborne, they give up a step or two to a linebacker like Jarrett. Um, I'm trying to remember his name, Miles Jack. I wanted to say Jarrett Jack. I'm, I live in Georgia and in Atlanta, and Jarrett Jack was a Georgia Tech basketball player. So anyway, Miles Jack 
he could have leaped and given Jack a chance to uh, catch up, but he doesn't do that. So he gets downfield here. He's got the ball in his right hand, maybe a little loose here, but he tucks it fast. And notice how he's aware of Jack's presence enough to be able to sit in the chair, to come to a full stop, and dip inside and let Jack overrun this play. This is really nice awareness off of a catch like this. Takes two steps before he breaks down like this and forces Jack to overrun it and now get downfield and get the first down. Just a savvy football play. It's these little plays that get me excited when I watch wide receivers because there are so many receivers who are much better athletes than Bell, who are much more heralded prospects, who catch with who who track the ball with their legs rather than tracking it with their arms. I talked about this a little bit with a play from Utah State at the Rookie Scouting Portfolio blog this week where a receiver would leap and then lose control to be able to really control himself at the sideline and make a move like this. But because he had his feet on the ground and put his arms out, he had more control over his legs to make a move, get the first down on a second and eight, keep the chains moving, keep the defense on its heels with good down and distance football for Nebraska to be able to execute its offense. So you're going to see it one more time. Not, not anything amazing as a route, but you know, it's doesn't need to be in this case. They're playing against off coverage. This is just good open field running. It's creative running. You know, when he has blockers, he'd, You've seen him be a little more decisive in the way the kick returner would, but when he's in a situation where he can create one-on-one -on -one and he has to create his own space, he can do it. And the fact that he does both and knows the balance between the two and when and when not to do it is very important. Now, this is a really beautiful play because this is a post-corner route where he gets open and makes the catch behind the, the defensive back here for the touchdown. And I'm going to show you a number of things about this. It's really good wide receiver play. One of the first things that you're going to notice with, with it is the route. And we're going to start with the stem, work our way into the break, and then work our way into his approach to the ball, tracking it, and then actually extending for the catch. So to begin with, straight stem. It's very important to have a straight stem because really you want to sell this vertical route. You also don't want to tip off which way you're going unless you're trying to tell a story that's a false story and make the defender believe that you're really giving something away when you're actually tricking him. But in this case, he's kind of got the poker face with the first six yards of the route. Now he begins to veer a little bit to the inside. And when he does that, watch how he turns the head in towards the hash. This completely sells the defensive back over top to break inside. And at that point, that's where he makes this nice little move to the outside. And watch that when he does it, his hips drop. See the hips drop like he's sitting in a chair? You want to drop your hips in these situations to have tighter turns, more control over what you're doing when you change direction. And Bell's already showing signs of being able to do it. When he can do it a little bit steeper on hard breaks and not just double moves like this, like I said, it's going to be very beneficial to his career. But he's able to make this double move from the post to the corner. He's got the defender's hips inside and his feet are stopped. And then he turns and breaks. But watch him break. He breaks back towards the ball where he expects the ball to be and makes and makes a flatter break rather than angling the break. This is going to create more separation for the defender. And he angles it a little bit. And now he's tracking the ball. But watch that his hands don't come up until the ball is overhead. And this is really a great part of playing vertical football as a wide receiver. You don't want to hold your hands up too high because if you do, you're – basically giving off the signal to the defender who's playing the man that it's time for him to make a play on the receiver for the ball. And he and that timing can work out bad for him. But only when the ball's overhead and that he's drifted a little bit behind the defensive back does he extend for the ball. And he makes the catch with his hands, arms well away from his body, and it's at the first available window. The ball, his arms aren't up here over his head. 
where the ball's at the the last available window. It's at the first available window here where he's extended. And if you recall the touchdown against Southern Miss, he extends his arms towards the ball like this, tips the ball to himself, and then catches the rebound. You can't do that if you're making the first opportunity for the catch with your arms straight up over your head. That's not the first available window. That's often one of the last available windows, and it's much harder to catch a rebound. So here he is making this catch. You see the defender's got his hand on the ball, and still you have Bell strong enough to pull the ball in, tuck it, and hit the ground. And he's turning away as he does this too. Watch him catch with his hands. You see that they're focused on the point of the football, the front point. The ball is, he's in a strong enough position that even when the defender's got his hand on the back point, because of where his hands are located, he has better leverage over the ball, brings it down, turns his shoulder away. So he's shielding the defender as much as he can and then tucks it into his body. This is just good fundamental football on basically what you would consider a 50-50 play. And you see Taylor Martinez get planted like a tombstone. Very fine work from Kenny Bell. And you notice that, you know, as a route runner, he can get open downfield for, you know, 22, 23, 25, 30, 35 yard reception. Not much there, a little press and cut inside, only gets 15 on the play. All right, so we're going to see him slot left, and once again, after a little bit of a read option fake, he's going to retreat towards the flat, still catch the, so he's positioned to catch the ball heading downfield, so he sets up this block, catches it with his hands at waist level, tucks it immediately to his left arm. This is just all good fundamental stuff that you see these layers of skills that are right little points ingrained in what he does, which just gives him a nice start as a prospect. Gets downfield, presses outside, then is cutting back to the inside. Makes a second move to be able to make this first man miss and then dip outside some more, lowers pads into the defender to finish. Just really nice work. Press outside, cut back inside. Seats the defender, second cut. Sidestep, outside, and there you go. Now you're gonna see some things that people will nitpick about Bell. You're gonna watch him, and the ball's gonna be a little loose from his left arm as he's running here. Changes direction, but the ball's high. But then you see him flashing the ball a little bit here and there. These are things that you're gonna to have to, he's gonna to have to be a little bit more cognizant of. But even the better runners in football sometimes will do that, especially when they have to change directions and layer moves together like this. But the fact that he can layer moves and he does it with intelligence and agility, really nice work. And I like that he finishes and attacks. Smaller guy, but he knows when to attack. He knows when he has the advantage to do that and where he's going to, it's not inflicting punishment as much as preventing defenders from inflicting punishing, punishment on him. So you're going to see him up here and you're just going to see the speed because he's he, he was even at the 45. Ten yards later, he's got a step on his man. He's using his arm to continue to establish separation a little bit. But the ball arrives about three to four yards past him. Nothing about this route really slowed him down. It was just an overthrow. You're going to see it here. Like that he has his hands up to start his routes. He just digs and comes off with intensity. Gives a little bit of some arm play there to establish some separation and swats the ball away, swats the arm away. But the ball's a little too far. Okay, now he's the outside twin man on the right near the numbers. And you're going to see a little bit of an arrow route. Breaking back to the ball. Again, breaking back and attacking the ball at the first available window. Very important. Sits down in that chair again. 
you've got Miles Jack, and I love this play because I'm a big fan of UCLA's linebacker, running back Miles Jack. He's a guy that you're going to hear a lot about in the next couple of years if you're um, – someone who pays attention to the draft when it comes time for draft eligible prospects. He's not draft eligible yet. He's a sophomore, but he's a hell of a player. And this is a fun little interplay between two smart, savvy players with some athleticism because Bell runs this arrow route inside out, otherwise known as a jerk route sometimes. Gets outside, working back to the ball, Attacks the ball at that first available window. His arm's in front of his helmet, not over his helmet. Turns inside to see over his back shoulder that, Jer that Jack is coming. And look at him duck under this. Nice balance. Gets away. But then savvy player here because Bell thinks he's done. He's gotten away. But nice little wrap of the ankle. And it's over right there. Only a one-yard gain. And also, his ankle gets kind of jerked a little bit because, again, he didn't expect it to that extent and kind of probably pulled it a little out of joint or did something to to hurt himself. But he ends up back in the game. You're going to see him here on a run back late in this game. Again, a little press inside, veer back to the outside. And he gets to the 25. Not a bad play. So we're going to watch one more game here from our man, Kenny Bell. This is the Miami game from this year. We can find it. Here it is, Miami game. This is a fun game to show because of his skill as a blocker. You can see him here as the slot man. Backing up once again, catching the ball so his pads are downhill. Tucks the ball immediately. Slides outside between two guys. Still gets hit, but he splits the defenders. He gets about four or five yards on this play. Not a bad play at all. Now he's going to be the inside trips man on the right side, just inside the hash. Wide open, skinny post for a touchdown. Now, here's some things that you can see and maybe intuit from what you can't see on these types of plays. We're going to get back here to where he is. First, the release. See the pads over the knees? They're kind of aligned with the knees, the lean forward. This is an intense release. It's a good release to drive the defender backwards to sell that vertical route. Defender's coming over from the outside, and look, he's already got the hand up, getting ready to be able to chop down on this reach in case he needs to, to maintain separation and not get jammed. And he manages to do that. Straighten his route, look over his shoulder, catch the ball with his hands over his shoulder in full stride, get to the 10, stiff arm on the defensive back. Nice stiff arm and shed the defender. That's some wiry strength combined with speed and quickness. And if you have those two aspects, you're going to break a lot more tackles than your size indicates. And that's what he does. You know, when you're 185 pounds and you're quick and you attack first, it's all you need to be. You don't need to be 220 pounds. You know, you don't need to be 220 pounds as a running back. Jamal Charles has that type of skill. Jamal Charles breaks tackles because he attacks the defender first because he's quick and because he's shifty, he knows how to eliminate angles. And that's basically what you saw from this play. So now we're going to see a little bit of Bell as a blocker. And this is something I really enjoy, even though it's not a major component of a wide receiver's game as a football player. But with some teams, this is going to be a, a difference maker for why they want to draft him. It's on the outside. He breaks up field to run off this man a little bit as Amir Abdullah works the outside. And then he breaks inside on the safety. Watch him attack the safety. Closes the gap. There's nothing tentative about this. You see receivers all the time tippy-toe towards the guy and want to play patty cake. 
This isn't what he's doing. Watch him attack. Closes that gap and delivers an uppercut to the outside shoulder. This opens up this lane, so it's a one-on-one -on -one with Abdullah in the cornerback. And let me tell you, if you haven't seen Amir Abdullah, you can look at the other RSP film room that I've done to him, as well as the RSP film room. I don't know if I've done one of Abdullah in the film room, but Ryan Riddle and I watched this game from another point of view with Denzel Perriman, the linebacker for Miami, and Abdullah stole the show in that, in that film room session. Gets under the defensive back. I just got to watch this again. I just, I really like watching this guy play one-on-one, -on -one, nice speed, gets under good balance, turns probably a six yard gain into an 11 yard gain. It's really nice work. We're going to watch this one more time because I noticed that I don't have this in half speed and I'd rather keep it in half speed here. So let's do that. We're going to show one more time. Breaks up field. Comes inside, closes the gap, delivers the blow. Then Abdullah getting underneath, sliding off, getting you know about four more yards after contact. Really nice play. All right, so now we're going to have Bell, and this is this is you know nice running. You're going to see some components of creative running on a jet sweep where he comes across. He's going to take the pitch. And watch him work with his blocks. It's not an extraordinarily big gain. Um, it's just a nice display of his agility and what he can do to create. He's patient enough to try and figure out whether he needs to work and whether he can work inside. But he and he cuts in between here. It's a nice quick cut. One step breaks inside. Sees the safety screaming down here, so now it's time to get outside. Tries to avoid this wrap, the combination of the dip outside and a little bit of his arm, and ends up getting pushed into the back of this defender and still has the balance to pull his way for another few yards. And we're looking at, you know, six to seven yard gain here that could have easily been a three to four yard gain at best. There's nothing here that indicates to me that he can't do this in the NFL. He may have fewer opportunities to display some of this, but certainly has the athleticism to hang. I would be very interested. I am very interested in what he's going to do with the shuttle time in the uh, at the combine. Because when you look at wide receivers, they oftentimes judge wide receivers on things, or at least draft analysts do. Some of my peers do this. I've been guilty of doing it. Is you know, you look at the height, you look at the weight, you look at forty time, you look at vertical leap, but do you look at shuttle time? Do you look at how quick they are and how how good they are at a stop start level? That's what made Le'Veon Bell special. That's what made Ahmad Bradshaw special in combination of their football skills, their vision, their ability to handle contact, things that I just mentioned about them that Bell also has, that Kenny Bell also has as a wide receiver. And, you know, the fact that Bell has these things and quickness, I think will be to his benefit. This is a really interesting play, and I'm going to show you why here. This is a nice catch. It's about 16 yards on the play. First down on a third and 11, and the cornerback's throwing a fit. And I'm going to show you why, because he knows that he messed this play up, and a lot of it had to do with Bell. Okay, so here's Bell working to the outside. Notice that he veers a little bit, but not too much. Pretty much a straight stem, and then after about four steps, breaks outside, and he's getting pinned. There, the defender is pinning Bell to the sideline here and actually pushes Bell a step out of bounds. Bell's out of bounds, but as long as you get right back in, 
you can come back and make the catch in the college football, and that's what he did. Watch him. He undercuts the man, makes a leaping catch, comes down with it. Awareness of the situation and good aggressive play. That's what you want to see. Here's another block for the inside trips here. And look at him get his hands inside and then just drive this defender backwards. And then he reworks his hands underneath. This is a guy sustaining his effort. Look at the, hand, the inside arm. Go underneath and punch again and push. That's what you want to see is the closed gap. Let's get down here. There we go. Closing the gap. Lower. He lowers his head. He kind of leaves with his head and with his his shoulders, but he still is able to keep it tight and push, keeping the feet moving and then working the arms and getting his arms underneath to stay in position. That's the type of effort you want to see from a wide receiver in the open field blocking. It's really good work. And there's the forlorn defensive back having to deal with Kenny Bell. And you're going to see it from here, too. He comes up field, you see him close the gap. He's got his hands a little bit outside, but under the pads, still enough that no one's really seeing that. And he's pretty much to the inside. So if you grab the collar like that, you're doing okay. You're not really holding according to the NFL rules. It's good work. So here he is again on the bottom. We're going to see him. I don't remember what this play was. Another block. Another good angle set up here, too. He works inside, then turns back to the outside. This allows him to get that inside shoulder, which is what you want if he expects the running back to run up to this side. When the running back doesn't do that, the running back decides to go further outside, Bell reads the cornerback floating outside, and as a good blocker should, he takes the defender the direction the defender wants to go and just gives a little more emphasis to push him out of the way. And then follows up again and continues to follow up. And notice the entire time, the gap is no longer, no broader. Look how, how close the gap remains throughout this play. He's never more than a half an arm's length away. It's about keeping your feet moving. And he has that. And number 11 is real. Number one at Miami is really upset about it all because he's getting ridden downfield and he's getting beat and he's getting frustrated. That's what good play can do to a defender. When you get dominated in a way like that. It's tough. This should have been caught. He came across two defenders, had to weave through them, and lost his concentration. But again, these are concentration drops. You have a, He's had two concentration drops in three games that we've seen. Not bad. He's able to work across the middle and get between the linebacker and the trailing defender just misses the ball. Not a horrible thing by any means. So that's Kenny Bell for you. I'm a big fan. I certainly think that he's someone that is capable of becoming a, you know, probably a secondary receiver in the NFL, a compliment, a possession guy, someone who can get deep for you when need be, especially off play action or double moves or more elaborate route choices, but he can also probably beat a man, you know, some of the some of the NFL defenders just straight up um, with just a nice release. Um, he's just not your he's just not your 6'3, 215, 220 pound guy who is going to uh, you know be targeted on 50-50 balls all the time. But Derek Mason was a smaller guy who played bigger than his size. Steve Smith did. We already talked about Antonio Brown. 
we've already talked about Isaac Bruce and Odell Beckham. Is this guy as good as them? That's hard to say. I would say that he's not. I would say that at this stage, he's not as dynamic looking, um, and he may never be that dynamic of a player. It's something that we need to see more from his workouts and see whether or not that that quickness really translates on um, to any type of measurement that they do with shuttle drills. What his explosiveness looks like with his um, vertical leap. Um, those types of those types of drills will be will be interesting to note. How he performs if he's in an All Star game. I haven't checked to see whether he's coming to the Senior Bowl or another bowl game. I sure hope to see him in Mobile. And if he is going to be there, you know, see how he handles, you know, some of the better corners in in drills that we watch, you know, throughout the week. But Bell certainly reminds me a lot of what Odell Beckham did. You know, plays after the catch can run deep, can get the deep ball, can return kicks for you. He's comfortable with physical play. Um, I don't think he's Odell Beckham, but he certainly is someone who is capable of playing to the level of the NFL and producing at a nice, at a nice clip and having a long career if he can stay healthy. So uh, that's Kenny Bell for you. It's about 5 a.m. I'm getting ready to hit the sack. Appreciate you all watching, um, and I will be putting the RSP up for pre-sale or pre-order um, for the April one delivery. You can order it ahead of time, and then you will just have you'll have a code so that you can download it. You can find that at my site, mattwaldman.com, if you want to do it directly, or you can look for you can get it also at mattwaldmanrsp.com. Have a good night.